NFL. It's very early. It's very early. But with the NFL schedules coming out, right, we see not only what the week one schedules are or what the week one schedule is, but for every single team, who they have, who they're going to go up against. And so this kind of gave me an opportunity to take a look at all the schedules and say, okay, who do I think is going to have the biggest rebound from last season? Who's going to make the biggest jump in their records? And there's a bunch of different options. But for me, it's the New England Patriots. Hands down, the New England Patriots. This is a team that went 7-9 and nine last year. They missed the playoffs for the first time since 2008. And I'm predicting based on their schedule this year that they will go 11-6 and six and make the postseason. So not only is there the personal motivation, right, for Bill Belichick missing the postseason, here you're seeing your former face of your franchise in Tom Brady winning a Super Bowl in his first season with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So naturally, not that you're going to have a personal vendetta against him, but your competitiveness will kick in. And Bill Belichick does not want to have another losing season. And you couple that with an easy schedule that they have, which I'll break down towards the end. This is a perfect opportunity for him to be primed to take another step forward and bounce back from last season. But one of the best uh, adages in life is experience is the best teacher. Right. And how you have to be able to learn from your previous mistakes. And when you look at the the NFL, right, and you look at Bill Belichick, he's always done something, he's always operated in the same manner. But the NFL is evolving. He can't be rigid anymore. I mean, Charles Darwin, right, famously known, for it's not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent. It's the ones that, that are most adaptable to change. You have to be able to change and evolve as a coach. Nick Saban, the reason why he's been so successful at Alabama as a head coach is because he realized and recognized, hey, I can't win and attract these top quarterbacks and these top wide receivers if I keep focusing on defense and running. I have to start to install more a more pass attack and pass heavy type of offense to attract some of these top recruits at the quarterback and at the wide receiver position. And now we're starting to see that Alabama is kind of a pipeline for wide receivers. And they've just got a uh, the number one high school quarterback in Bryce Young out of, out of modern day in Los Angeles still on their team now. So Bill Belichick said, hey, I need to evolve. And so what he did was he finally became unpredictable. And he deviated away from his previous dispositions in the way he would typically act in the past. And he wasn't hamstrung. And now he finally said, okay, you know what? To win in the NFL, I can't be parsimonious. I can't be stingy anymore. I can't be frugal. I got to go out and I got to spend in free agency and actually get and receive valuable talent in the NFL. So what did we do? What did we see? The New England Patriots spent like a record $137 million over the first 24 hours of free agency, which at the time was the most money spent in that condensed 24-hour cycle. They entered the offseason with the fourth most cap space. And what do they do? They go sign John U. Smith. They go sign Hunter Henry, two guys that had Tremendous seasons at the tight end position. John U. Smith, of course, had career numbers in receptions, receiving yards, touchdowns. Hunter Henry was second on the team for the Chargers last year in receptions. He's a major target. They spent a lot of money to acquire those guys. Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, they go out and sign those guys. The defense gets short up. They sign Matthew Judon from the Baltimore Ravens, who was one of three outside linebackers last year to amass 50 hits and so many other kind of quarterback hits and sacks along with T.J. Watt and Zadarius Smith. 
This is a guy who was a two-time Pro Bowler. Then you sign from the Miami Dolphins, Davon Gadshaw. Gadshaw, rather. Right? Jalen Mills is on the team. Dante Hightower, Patrick Chung opt back in to the season. So you combine that, you couple that with their schedule, and now you've got a team that's going to bounce back. You look at the New England Patriots this year. They start the year versus Miami. I think that's a win. At the Jets, that's a win. Versus New Orleans, I think that's a win. No more Drew Brees. Tampa Bay, that's their first loss of the year. So they start 3-1. and one. At the Texans, that's a win. Versus the Cowboys, that's a win. Versus the Jets, that's a win. At the Chargers, I think it'll be close. I think it'll be competitive. I think they'll win that. At the Panthers, that's a win. Now you're starting 8-1 and one this year. The Browns, okay, that's a loss. At the Falcons, that's a win. Titans, that's a loss. Bills, that's a, at the Bills is a loss. At the Colts is a loss. Bills is a loss, okay? So now you've lost five of your last six. Now you're nine and six, but you close out the year beating the Jaguars and the Dolphins again. And you finish the season 11 and six. And I think that the New England Patriots, yes, the Buffalo Bills should be the, the favorite team in the AFC East, but I like the Patriots to finish second in that division. I've never been a firm believer in the Miami Dolphins just yet. I just think I didn't. I also didn't think they had the best draft. I thought the Patriots did really well landing on Matthew Jones, Christian Bar- Barrymore, just falling into your lap in the second round as a defensive tackle may have been one of the top 20 prospects in the NFL draft. So I think the Patriots will have the biggest bounce back season this year. And I don't even know if he'll necessarily be a, a surprise to teams. But this is a team that's going to have a tremendous, tremendous rebound from a season ago. They're definitely going to make uh, the playoffs this year.